Hello and welcome. Today's video is going to be completing a service at MIT on my 2007 Volvo S40. So to start we're going to change the oil and for that we're going to need to raise the car whether that be with a lift or an axle stand. Also make sure you've run the car so the engine is warm and the oil flows out easily. Take off the oil filler cap before getting under the car to locate the sun plug. This is undone with a 13mm socket. Unwind the final part of the screw with your hand so you've got better control and position a drain pan underneath to catch the oil. Allow the oil to drain out fully. I'd also suggest getting a completely new sump plug because they don't use a washer, instead they're a complete unit for this particular engine. Whilst the oil is draining, we can move on to the oil filter. These aren't usually done up that tight, but mine was. So I used a large set of grips to help me undo the old filter. Once you've removed it, clean up as much of the used engine oil that you can from the surface where the new filter will go on. Then you'll need to coat the seal of the new filter with fresh engine oil before refitting it. The torque setting for this is 12 newton meters. If you don't have a filter wrench, some people do just tighten them up so they're hand tight. Now you can install the new sump plug and tighten it to 27 newton meters. Whilst I'm here, I'm just gonna clean up the rest of the sump and the area around the engine with some brake cleaner, just because I know I have a leak and it'll be easy to find out where the oil is coming from with the engine clean. Now bring the car back down to ground and fill up with fresh engine oil. On this 1.6 engine, I put in about four liters before checking and topping up a little more. When reading the dipstick, make sure that the oil is between the two indentations. That completes the oil and oil filter change. Now let's move on to the air filter. Start by removing all the securing bolts on the air filter housing. These are a seven millimeter and you may need an extension to reach some of the bolts. Once you take the cover off, you'll see the filter. This one served its purpose and it was actually really quite dusty. The new one goes in and sits into some moon-shaped grooves on the lower part of the filter housing. Then just refit the top cover and the bolts. This filter change is quite simple and that completes everything we need to do underneath the bonnet. The next filter change, however, is a lot more difficult. We're replacing the cabin filter, which is in the passenger side footwell. Now as I'm going through this, you'll notice the camera angles aren't great. It's quite a tight space to work in and to film it as well. Sometimes you just need both hands. In fact, this job does require some contortionist skills to get into the footwell, very nimble hands to do the job and also the patience of a saint. So to start, we undo the tabs securing the fuse board underneath the glove box. Pull it down as much as you can. You'll see the filter housing is just behind this panel. Feed your hand down the side, take out the securing bolt and the cover for the filter housing. Next, we want to take off the bracket that the fuse board secures onto. There are two 13mm nuts that secure it to the bulkhead. Gently feed it out and then you'll have enough room to pull out the old filter. You'll see side by side that this one probably hasn't been changed for quite a while and you can see all the built up grime in the fins of the filter. With the new one, I had to end up folding the filter slightly to get it into position so that it would slide in. Once you've got it lined up, it then goes in no problem. Then replace the housing cover and put in the securing bolt. Next, we need to reinstall the bracket and I found the easiest by feeding it in from the left side and round into position. Reinstall the two nuts that are securing it in, followed by the fuse board. 
This bit here shows you how the fuse board connects onto the brackets itself. Once it's sitting properly, we secure the fuse board back up underneath the glove box. Then tuck back in the carpet where it's been pulled down. And I have to say, I'm quite pleased that job is over. With the service done, we can now reset the service light. So pop your keys in the ignition, press and hold the trip button, turn the keys to the number two position and keep holding that button until you see the flashing eye symbol in the middle of the display. Then let go of the button and it will reset the service interval. Turn the car off and back on just to check that the message is gone now. Job done. With the service now done, it's time to see if the car will pass its MOT. In the UK, this is an annual road test for cars over the age of three years old, just to check their roadworthiness. So it's a detailed look into the condition of the car and to see if the car will pass an emissions test. So the car's been serviced and it's now had its MOT and the result is pass. There are a couple of advisories. The first one is the oil leak and after looking underneath the car, it looks as though it's coming from the valve cover gasket. So in a follow up video, I'll be sure to do a step by step guide for you all. The second advisory is that the tyre is worn, so I thought whilst the car was here, I would get that replaced by the workshop. That means that now that I have two new tyres on the front of the car, because the other one actually got a bit of shrapnel in, but I was in a bit of a rush, so I didn't have any film of that ordeal. Now with the service, tyres and the MOT now being done, and obviously the valve cover gasket when that's done, it should sail through its next MOT with no dramas. The only other things that I want to do on this car are perhaps tidy up a bit, maybe a clay and a polish, and replace the power steering pump, which so far I've learnt to live with, but I just want to replace that before it goes completely. I also wanted to say a big thank you to everyone at Wayland's Volvo in Reading. You may have seen some other videos of me working on my Z4, and some people have asked, well, how did I get the lift? They have been kind enough to not only let me use their workspace, but they've also offered their guidance at times as well. My DIY videos may look like I know what I'm doing after all the editing has been done, but from time to time, there is a technician in the background telling me where I've gone wrong. So thank you very much to all the team. That's about it for this video. I hope you found that helpful. Please feel free to like, comment and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.